Okay, today we're working on an iPad 7th generation, the 10.2, with the notorious CPU failure, where um, yeah, I believe it's a dry joint underneath the CPU. So basically what we're gonna do is just take the CPU off and reball it. So as you can see now, I've got the hot air set to around 270 degrees on a medium um, blow if you will and all we're doing is scraping off as much of the black underfill the uh, like epoxy that they put on um, just so obviously when we lift the CPU none of the surrounding components lift up as well Okay, this area here is where I like to come in with my flap tool to raise the CPU. So what I'll do, I'll just add a little bit of flux around the area and then we can start cranking up the heat and I will take these three components off the board. I believe two are capacitors and one of them is a resistor. But I'll just take them off the board for now and keep them somewhere safe because I will be putting them back on after the job's done. So now I'm using a bigger nozzle on my heat gun and I've cranked up the heat to 450 degrees and making sure I've got heat in every single corner because we do not want to pull any pads off the CPU in the corner. Uh, as we can see now, the CPU looks good. I've got no missing pads around the CPU and no missing pads on the actual board. So now we'll crack on with clean up. So for clean up, I will put a big blob of my solder on top of the tip and we'll start diluting their harder melting solder. Cause this will just help us with the clean up. And just remember, flux is your best friend. And you'll notice I'm also keeping my heat gun blowing at it all times. I've brought the heat back down to 270 at the moment. So the board's staying nice and hot. And that will help with not losing any pads. And steady as you go with clean wick at all times plenty of flux and again the heat gun is continuously blowing any pads that you see that are pulled they're just no connects so they're not to worry about as long as that board remains warm you should be good These little capacitors that are on the CPU. I saw a video um, that helped me and it stated that really they're not needed. So again, this iPad, it's a friend of mine's anyway, so I'm not gonna be replacing the four capacitors on the CPU and we'll see if it does come back to the shop. just using a little flat blade but you can use your tweezers as long as you keep blowing the hot air just to get rid of any more of the black underfill because you want that CPU to sit nice and flat when you relay it. Even in the four areas where the capacitors were you want to scrape out all that black underfill as well. We don't want anything to hamper the chip from going down into its proper resting place. Now for the fun part, the CPU cleanup. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna dilute the solder again with some solder paste. This solder paste that I use is 183 degrees solder paste. So basically all that solder paste is now mixing in with the other solder to make it a little bit more softer and a bit more forgiving. And now again with the hot air constantly blowing at 270 degrees, all we're gonna do is keep scraping away at the black underfill and because the solder balls are quite malleable they'll just roll around so hopefully no pulled pads this bit is a little bit time consuming for me because this is the most delicate part in my opinion i do not want to pull any pads off the cpu because that will result in a dead iPad. Okay, now I'll load it with some more flux and with the hot air and some wick in the tweezers, uh, not using any soldering iron, I'll just lightly glide over and try and mop up as much solder as possible. And I'll keep doing this whilst still trying to get rid of all the black underfill off the chip. Once I'm happy with it all nice and clean, we'll start with putting some UV mask on the old capacitor points. We just don't want any solder going on there and uh, causing any problems in the future. Sadly, I've not got any video of this actual jig, but this reballing jig for the CPUs is quite good. It's a magnetic base. Um, then it's got the blue jig for CPUs from, I think, the A8 up to the A13. And then the magnetic stencil goes on the top, holding it all in place. So then we can fill it with our solder paste. I'm currently using a 183 degree solder paste. It is quite um, dried out, um, so it's not... That problematic and the heat I'm using uh, low heat I think 250 degrees and just making sure it's all around not keeping the heat going in one uh, position for a long time once I'm happy that it's all uh, got all the balls some of the balls may not actually be connected to the CPU so at this point I will put a layer of flux down and I'll let the balls drop through and find their way to um, the pads once I'm happy with that then we can start cleaning it with alcohol to help separate the stencil from the CPU and again, just take your time because you don't want to lift up a um, 
one of the solder balls that's stuck in the stencil and it rips the pad off the CPU. So just make sure you use plenty of alcohol to separate it. I noticed when I'd done mine, one um, ball had moved, but again, easily rectified, but sadly I didn't capture it on camera. I just put a little bit of solder, a uh, little bit of flux on that hole, that one pad, and just moved up the, um, the ball. And now we'll give it another coat of flux, reheat everything and get everything all centered. And we know all the solder balls are connected to the pads. Give it a good look. See if there's any stragglers. Get rid of any imperfections that we can see. And it all looks good. So we don't even need to clean the flux off that chip. We can leave the flux on. flux there and what we'll do we'll replace these components so first the big capacitor then followed by the little resistor and then followed by the tiny tiny capacitor again how important them two capacitors are is anyone's guess and a very light coating of flux remember too much flux it'll start to bubble and it could make the CPU shift too much and then again nice even heat at 400 degrees will help it drop onto the board and I'll just give it a slight nudge to make sure it's all good so after assembly we get an image which is great and it's still detected by the computer which again is great so all I'm gonna do is try and kick it out of the recovery mode because obviously we were trying to do a restore earlier which stuck it into recovery mode so hopefully fingers crossed and if not we'll have to flash it awesome jobs are good and 